Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here. You guys know what time it is. Time for a client lesson update. And for those of you who watch these type of videos and enjoy them, as many of you have said they're your favorite segment, please click like down below. Um, and a lot of these uh, people have said these are useful for both them, themselves, learning things about themselves, and a lot of people out there who uh, want to be trainers and they don't have a whole lot of experience yet. And even some guys who said, hey, I've been a trainer for quite a while, and this is actually kind of valuable information. Uh, it's just me giving you guys the lessons I've learned uh, coaching clients and things. And I've actually had people ask, how many clients do you have? And I don't always make that public, but I'll be honest with you guys at this point, I have 14 clients right now. I have 14 full-time clients. Yes, I've had dropouts. Uh, people said, well, I can't believe you haven't had any dropouts. Well, of course I've had dropouts. Not everybody can afford to do it. Uh, in fact, I have had four dropouts, okay, over the course of me doing this coaching, I've had four dropouts. I've stayed on good terms with those people, and I've stayed in communication with those people. So they weren't unhappy with the service. It was oftentimes financial issues. It was a big, big factor for them uh, because, I mean, I charge $250 a month, and not everyone can afford that. So let's come over to the point. One of the things that I notice is that you get some clients who cannot believe that a moderate amount of volume will put muscle on them. And it's fascinating when we see the comparison, the contrast, because um, you do have people out there who do not respond well to minimalist moderate rep systems, for example. That's a totally different topic. That's genetic, because you take something like uh, any of my novice programs, right? My novice current one, the, the 2.0, or you take starting strength or strong lifts or even 531. There are people who do not respond to those programs. And I want to make that clear. I have clients who got very bad results doing those sort of programs. Now, there's other factors involved with the way they execute lifts. There's genetics, other things, but that it's its own set of people. That it needs to be another topic again, something we could discuss in its own video. But what you also have are people who literally cannot believe that you could hand them a moderate volume program and they would gain muscle from it. Okay, And people don't look at studies. And a perfect example of, of one of my clients has looked at some stuff I gave him and said, this, this isn't enough volume. There's no way I could gain muscle on this. And this is a fairly thin guy who needs to gain a bunch of body weight. And I basically told him, I said, well, what do you mean? Like, there's just not enough training volume. And, and it was actually, by most standards, would be considered a, a above-average volume program. But I think people have been so conditioned sometimes from the bodybuilding world that, number one, they don't even know what muscles are being hit by movements. Number two, that if you do less than 15 or 20 sets for a muscle in a given session, they just can't comprehend that you can grow from it. And the perfect example I had to give to this individual, and, I, and I, this is a, a more extreme case, but I have others who've said, hey, this isn't enough volume. And ironically, some of my really advanced guys, people would be shocked. They, they don't do the sort of training volumes I do. I have advanced guys on conjugate who, after their max work or speed work, only do about 10 to 12 work sets, okay, four days a week, total. But I've also had an individual who... And so you, you can't grow off this. I'm like, well, what do you mean? I could grow your legs. I could grow your legs completely off of two lower body sessions a week with five sets of 10 on hip thrusts and five sets of 10 on good mornings. You could actually stimulate very large amounts of muscle growth through your entire lower body, every single muscle in it was just doing that. And, and I told him that and he's like, well, I, I don't see how, where's the quad work? Right, well, go look at the data. Look at the research on hip thrusts. Hip thrusts build all the same muscles a squat does. There's good evidence for that. There's studies showing at this point that a hip thrust only program in a college athletes and women increase their one rep max squat. In other words, they took two groups of women, so we're just going to use a hip thrust as an example, and they had them test their max squat. And then they put one group on a squat-only program and the other group on a hip thrust-only program for eight weeks. They didn't do the other exercise. The hip thrust group didn't do any squatting. They tested them at the end of eight weeks, and both groups' max squats went up across the board, and they went up evenly. 
hip thrust builds all the same muscles. Then you take and you throw in good mornings. It's going to be more posterior chain dominant. There's a little bit of quad involved in a good morning. It's not a lot. Works the entire spine, glutes, hamstrings, calves, right? Well, people will say, well, that's what, five by ten on each one twice a week. How is that enough to grow on? And he didn't believe it. And I had actually had more than that in the program. That wasn't all he was doing. That was done after his, his uh, heavier squatting and stuff. So I would say people who don't understand that need to go look at the data that's out there. And I'm not saying that this is going to give you maximum growth because I, I think there's some flaws in the, the GVT studies. But if you go look at a lot of those women's GVT studies, what did they find? Certain muscle groups, if you're taking sets to failure, and we're talking about 10, 12 rep set range to failure, they found that some muscles didn't grow faster doing more than five sets. Okay. They also found that a lot of muscles in general, all the muscles they tested in this particular study, didn't get any bigger by doing more than 10 sets in a workout. The problem with the GVT studies is what? That they only trained each muscle once a week. Number two, we could get into some nuanced issues with recovery and other stuff. I had to do that they were doing the same exercises and taking them all the way to failure um, instead of maybe adding some smaller supplemental lifts. But what we noted there was that when compound movements were used as a general rule, people didn't get bigger in those studies by doing more than 10 sets in a single session. So we get into session to session volume, but when we come over and we start doing a four day upper lower, other than adding your smaller exercises for most people, and again, there's other variables involved. Someone like me, I have a perfect lifestyle. I'm going to have a better recovery. Okay, I sleep 9 to 10 hours a night. I eat 4,500 calories a day. I do soft tissue work every day. It matters. But when we're talking about normal individuals with normal schedules and lifestyles, the data tends to suggest that the 5 to 10 set range per session, at least for your big multi-joint exercises, kind of gives ideal hypertrophy. Now, there's conflicting data on it, but we're talking about in that case when sets are taken to failure. 5 to 10. You don't see extra growth, and some of them they saw less growth. 5 to 10 sets. Now, we see stuff like Dr. Brad's study that shows small amounts, but that's the point we come to. When we start exceeding 10 sets, we're not talking about noticeable muscle growth. When we start exceeding something like 10 sets per session, which I do, we are literally talking about getting something like a 1% return on your investment. In other words, let's say you could gain X amount of muscle by doing 10 hard work sets in a session and you go to 15. You might, at a best case scenario, gain 1% or a half a percent more muscle from that. It's not going to be noticeable over three months. It's not going to be enough difference that you're going to see any visible change or a measurable change in muscle scale weight in six months or three months. That's something it's like maybe at the end of the year, you netted two ounces of extra muscle for the entire year by doing that. So when you're dealing with people who have jobs and careers and things, it doesn't make a lot of sense to go beyond that doesn't make a lot of sense. I generally cap most of my lifters off at around 10 work sets per muscle group per session. Because I put all of them, my noobs go on full body programs. Some of them go on upper lowers. But most of my people are on four day upper lower programs. If I have them doing seven to 10 really high quality sets, not counting any other smaller stuff like their curls and tricep extensions, because again, some muscles just don't get worked as much from the big movements and they really get a half set. So if we count big movements as a half set other than their one primary mover, like we can count the bench press as chest, it's a half set for delts, half set for triceps. If we start breaking things up that way, and you do 7 to 10 high-quality sets per muscle group twice a week. Some of my people, I make them pen lay four days a week. That's different. We, end up don't, we don't do more than five sets. We do three to five sets if they do that. But if you're in that range, for most people, 
you're going to be pretty close to the most muscle growth you're going to stimulate. And if you could recover from more, let's say your maximum recoverable volume is higher for a host of factors. It could be extra sleep, extra food, perfect lifestyle, perfect stress management, uh, anabolic substances. These things can raise that ceiling. But for people who aren't raising that ceiling considerably through all these other lifestyle factors, you're probably not going to see significant gains. You might see more gains, but it's not going to be an amount that you could measure. It's going to be microscopic amounts. You're getting almost zero return on your investment. You're going to get, by working in, in that kind of volume range I just described, probably 97, 98% of your maximum growth. But when you get clients who have been led to believe that they need very, very large volumes of training, what happens? They don't understand that, that, that that's going to work. Someone like that, you, they struggle to understand that five sets of 10 with a 10 rep max, basically going to failure on five sets on a big compound movement, in their mind, they're like, you can't grow from that. that that's just not enough to grow from. Yet multiple studies have confirmed that it produces a very large training response. So in other words, if you were to come in and do a big lower body lift, five sets of 10, pretty much to failure, 10 to 12 rep range to failure, you're going to stimulate very large amounts of muscle growth, okay? As long as you're working hard. Timmy, you come in in a bench press, your chest will grow from that. Your chest will grow from that. Same thing with an overhead press. Your delts are going to grow from that. People looked at my client, Mikey, and they're like, man, how does delts get that big? Mikey does 5 by 10s on the standing press twice a week. That's it. That is his only shoulder exercise. That's how he grew those delts. That's 10 sets of standing presses a week, though. Five sets each session. It worked. Works for him. He does extra tricep work he needs it but again getting muscle growth is volume dependent but you don't have to have 30 sets a week to grow and I do 30 plus sets a week but it's not necessary to see nearly maximum growth it just isn't and a lot of your clients aren't going to grasp that because they're looking at individual lifts and they're just like I, I don't see how this could work but it's like and you can throw them a lot of volume and it shows you the difference in mindset that different people have all right, and I think a lot of it comes back to the fact that we do see online the whole bodybuilding world showing 15 to 20 sets in a single session for a muscle group. And for most people, if they're real work sets, it's simply going to be too much. They are probably not going to see the best gains from that, uh, barring a few instances. All right, guys, well, that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.